I think it's about time I took a look at the Banggood Lark series LED glow bulbs by Didju. And uh, this one uh, is a 12 watt unit. And uh, again, the iPad's picking up flicker. I'm not seeing flicker. It's a nice warm white. Um, and I've got it on a power meter here now. I don't use this meter an awful lot because it's incredibly flickery because of the multiplex. It looks fine to me, but the uh, iPad is just picking up that multiplexing. But what's interesting here is it's about 11 uh, watts. Um, but more interestingly, the power factor is 0.9, which is very, very good. So uh, that suggests it's got a switch mode power supply in it. So let's uh, open it up and take a look inside it. I'll just put this down out of the way. I did try it uh, on this meter first, and it seemed too good to be true. It did suggest a really uh, good power factor, so I thought I'd double check on that other meter. So let's uh, pop this open and see if I can not burst the skin of my knuckles in the process, because I... yes. So let's chuck that down there. Now... Is this going to open easily? I think it's a plastic globe. I don't think I'm in danger of self impalement Making crunching noises, but not really opening much. Oh, oh, that's quite promising. There we go. Right, so it's using the common arrangement of the aluminium frame that if I unscrew these, I'm pretty sure it will reveal... Is that going to pop out as it is, or is that going to be screwed in? Yeah, I think that is going to be screwed in. This might be quite tricky to get to bits. Let's start then by popping off these screws, because that should uh, give us a head start at the very least. So these LEDs are all wired in series, as is fairly common. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 LEDs. Uh, typical 4 voltage, well, I, I was going to say typical 4 voltage is typically 3 volts each, but I wonder if it's the multi-chip LEDs. Uh, I suppose ultimately I could find that out before I take, uh, you know, let's measure the voltage across this. Let's put that screw back on, let's plug this in again into this. Uh, this incidentally, uh, it merits its own in video, it's a silicon covered um, light. So you've basically got a standard uh, pendant here, but it comes with this uh, silicon cover that you get in a wide range of colours. And it's got the fabric coated cable and it's just for, you know, it's for those uh, retro look, the fabric pendant lights that hang from the ceiling. And it also at the other end normally comes with this uh, a ceiling rose cover thing that just grips on, just by sheer friction, just grips onto the cord and you just push it up to the ceiling. It's, it's quite neat. I got the pink one obviously because, uh, yeah, it's the traditional colour of this channel. Because uh, pink electronic ship from China that goes boom is always quite good. Oh yes, this is this wasn't thought out well. This is uh, looking straight into dazzling beams of light, so I think I shall stick it across. Uh, let's turn it to about 20 volts DC, and we'll stick it across one of those LEDs and shunt it out, because the regulator should kick in. I can't see a thing. Let's see if I can make one LED go out here. Let's see if I can not blow the thing to smithereens. Oh, I can't see anything. This isn't a terribly good start, is it? I may have to just momentarily unscrew that to see. Okay, I think I can see what I can do here. Oh, this is this isn't going too well, is it? This is go this is going terribly. No, I'm going to have to have another go here. This uh, Maybe I should have got a pair of sunglasses on, right? I can see the cables now. I'm just going to go for the cable coming into the unit. And the voltage is... Oh, of course, it's way over the range of that, so let's uh, boost it up a range a bit. My eyes are now adjusting. I, the solder connections in the surface mount LEDs are so small. Oh, that's about that's about 80 volts. Um, hold on then. 
Uh, 80 volts and there's 13 chips. Mains, 13 LEDs should I say. 80 volts divided by the 13 LEDs equals 6. So it's basically it's 2 chips per LED. Okay, so they're double chip LEDs. So let's get that uh, last screw out and see if it reveals what's inside. I can't see much now because I'm somewhat dazzled with the light. Blinded by the light. A slightly ungenerous amount of heatsink compound under there. Is this going to liberate? Yes it is. Oh! Okay. So there's a pillar. The circuit board is wedged right down there. That's going to be one that they've uh, put the They've put it down and then put the pins in so to lock it in place. Is this going to... am I going to be able to prise this out? It may actually be recessed down. I shall poke a knife, or I'll, I'll try my spudger in it and see if that does it. And if I don't have any joy in a moment, I shall pause momentarily and that will also let me uh, recover my vision from looking directly into an LED lamp for a while. Right, that looks quite promising. Yep. Is that going to liberate it? No, it's not. No, oh, that's, that's a start, he said, shoving his hands down into what could have a live pasta. Well, that's not coming out too easy. Uh, long nose pliers. Pliers, pliers, pliers. And this is where I still can't see anything because all I can see is dots. Not really surprising. Let's try and grab that circuit board and yank it out mm, without damaging it. No, I think I'm going to have to pause momentarily to get this out. I think it may actually be glued in. One moment, please. So here's the power supply, and first and rather disappointingly, there is a number on this chip, the little 8-pin chip in here, but uh, it's so vague. And initially I thought it was a bright power chip. I don't think it is a bright power chip. It's very hard to tell because the, the engraved number in it is just so fine um, and so light that it's kind of skipped out and there's sort of numbers pretty much completely missing in the middle. So it's very hard to tell what it is. However, it is a typical non-isolated buck regulator. Um, that explains just the, the very good power factor. So uh, the power comes in and it goes through this small 4.7 ohm resistor. And then it goes to the input of the bridge rectifier, and across the input to the bridge rectifier is the metal oxide varistor, which is designed to just remove any transients and spikes to protect the circuitry. The output of the bridge rectifier goes to this small capacitor here. It's not got uh, a terribly high value. And then it goes via these two inductors to this capacitor here. So basically, it's just some filtering um, that gets switched through this inductor. It's not a transformer, it's just a bare inductor. Um, and then, I, I'm saying it's not a transformer, I get the feeling that, uh, looking at that, that, there's possibility it may have a feedback winding in it. Ye oh no, maybe not. I think that is just one end of the inductor. Yes it is, it is just a simple inductor. Um, and then the output uh, goes via this diode to this capacitor, which is a... Uh, um, 100 volt, 47 microfarad capacitor. And there's really not an awful lot to say about it. it it's following the standard arrangement of a typical one single chips a buck regulator type thing that is so common in these lamps. So how about longevity? Well, it's not, well, it's not longevity now because I've completely destroyed it in the process of taking it to bits. It's not going to go back together too easily, particularly because I can't get the wire in there very, very easily. But uh, 13 chips rated about 12 watts total, so that's going to be pretty much the best part of one watt per chip. Uh, and it can, it's certainly got the extra heat sinking that it's going into this aluminium dish that then couples onto that aluminium uh, sort of housing inside. So it should be fairly good at dissipating the heat, but it, it's always hard to tell, you know, without actually putting this on test for a, a long period of time, it's hard to tell how good something's going to be. But, um... It seems to be an upmarket lamp, you know, it's not trying to ch cheap out and uh, fake figures and use uh, 
capacitive drop with a ridiculously high value capacitor to, to get a high power lamp with just ordinary LEDs. It does seem to be making a fairly decent effort to be an actual 12 watt lamp with good power factor. So um, I guess it's okay, but I can't guarantee, you know, I can't, with, as I say, test it as such to determine whether it's going to last a long time or the LEDs are going to degrade. Uh, the only thing it's going to show that is actual um, use. So if you've bought one of these uh, and been using it, then by all means, in the description down below, or should I say in the comments down below, uh, let us know uh, how how you've been finding it, if any of them have failed already. It's the Did You 12 Watt from Banggood.